so i hope that you have seen the questions uh, we are going to prepare for a keltron recruitment or written examination which is going to happen from uh, 5th that is which will be happening on 5th 6th and 7th so one of the very important uh, topics that you have to study or the must study topic is embedded systems because the keltron is mainly recruiting as embedded engineers or embedded areas for embedded areas they are recruiting okay so uh, uh, we are going to see the questions uh, the solutions of the questions actually okay so these questions are from embedded systems so the first question is you'll be seeing the questions once again on board which of the following offers cpus as integrated memory or peripheral interfaces this means that which of this uh, that is out of the given options which is having integrated memory and peripheral okay that is cpu will be having integrated memory and peripheral now if you know the architecture of microcontroller and microprocessor the differentiation between these two you should be knowing that uh, in a microcontroller so if you see the microcontroller you will be having all the things integrated onto a single chip there will be memory units there will be peripherals there will be uh, processors everything will be integrated to a single unit ram rom everything the ram peripherals everything will be integrated onto a single unit okay whereas for the case of a microprocessor only the processor will be uh, as a single unit and the other uh, elements that is the peripherals the io everything we have to connect externally so that is a basic difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller so you should be knowing this is by heart microcontroller means everything will be in a single it is a controller so everything will be inside that single chip or single board whereas for a microprocessor only processor is present other units we have to add externally okay so here the question is asking which of the following cpus has integrated memory and peripherals means it is option a that is microcontroller is the correct answer okay moving on to the second question so in uh, when you are studying for embedded systems or when you are studying the embedded system topics you should be actually studying this microcontroller microprocessor everything because the embedded systems mainly deals with these type of processors okay so the second question is the initial routine is often referred to as dash a initial program b bootstrap program c final program d initial embedded program so i hope that you have heard of this term called bootstrapping or bootstrap program which is actually the instantiation routine or the initialization routine okay so whenever we are starting the computer the first thing that is getting loaded is called first thing that is uh, that is running is called bootstrap program okay so the correct answer is b that is bootstrap program is the initial or the initialization it is actually called the initialization routine it initializes all the other things this the operating system everything it is initializing okay so the answer is option b which is bootstrap program third question which one of the following is uv erasable that is which of the memory is uv erasable i'll read out the options a flash memory b sram c e prom d dram okay correct answer is e prom e prom means it is erasable programmable rom e prom means e stands for erasable p stands for programmable so here the erasing actually is done with the help of uv erase okay so which of the memory is erasable with the help of uv erase correct answer is option c okay so correct answer for the third question is option c next question which type of memory is suitable for low volume production of embedded system that is when you are producing a low volume type embedded system which of the memory is suitable that is a question okay a rom b volatile c non volatile d ram okay so we can go for non volatile memory whichever non volatile memory is present you can go for that memory because when you are uh, producing a system which is of low volume then if you are using a non volatile memory the device uh, which is having a non volatile memory will allow the software to get downloaded into the system and it can be retained within the device okay so you can go for a non volatile memory that is the best choice okay so it can be used for 
low volume production that is this uh, non volatile memory can be used for low volume production so, okay correct answer is c next question 5 which architecture in digital signal processor reduces the execution time okay a harvard b cisc c program storage d von neumann now i hope that you have heard of these terms harvard memory and von neumann so we have actually uh, discussed regarding these two type of uh, memories or uh, it is not actually memory it is actually architectures okay architectures uh, while discussing the microprocessor initial videos okay uh, so there are two type of organizing a architecture of dsp it can be harvard architecture or it can be von neumann okay these are the two methods two basic methods okay in the case of a harvard architecture the memory has no partitions sorry the memory has partitions it is divided into data memory and program memory whereas in the case of von neumann if you see the memory memory organization both the memory that is data and program are being stored into a single space there is no partition or nothing so here when you are going for the von neumann architecture you can have a bus for taking the uh, program and data and there can be congestion because a single bus will be mostly taking the program and data so it cannot be fetched together so there can be sometimes congestion problem also but when you are going for a partition like this that is when data is stored to a particular space and uh, program is stored to another space you can have a differentiation between these two and here when the processor so the processor will be accessing this memory right that is the processor will be taking the data and also the program so when this type of arrangement is being followed what happens is that it is more orderly and it will reduce the execution time here there can be congestions there can be uh, uh, collisions in the bus and all those things will happen okay so this is a more uh, orderly arrangement of memory it is more suitable and it also reduces the execution time so the correct answer is harvard architecture that is a harvard is the correct answer okay correct answer for the fifth question is a okay so this is the differentiation between harvard and von neumann the main difference is that there is a partition or a separation for data memory and program memory in harvard but in von neumann which is a more uh, a primitive kind of architecture here both the memories that is program and data is stored to a single space okay so correct answer for fifth question is a next question that is the sixth question sixth question is which forms the heart of the operating system very basic question okay so when i am reading the options you will be getting to know the answer okay which forms the heart of an operating system a kernel b application c hardware d operating system so the heart of the operating system heart or core of an operating system is called kernel so this kernel can control the hardware and can deal with the operations of interrupts io system memory and everything so mainly all uh, important operations or processing is done with the help of a kernel okay so if you see the os the heart or the core is called kernel Okay, so this is the operating system. Correct answer is A. Okay. Next question. Seventh question actually. Okay. Which of the following languages can describe hardware? Okay. So, it is again a simple question but a, a little bit thinking type of a question. If you are familiar with this thing, then you should be answering in uh, like one second or something. Okay. Which of the following language can describe the hardware? A, C, B, C++, C, Java, D, V, H, D, L. Okay. So, hardware description language means HDL. It is V, H, D, L. Okay. So, V, H, D, L is the hardware description language. That is, in V, H, D, L, if you see the difference of V, H, D, L from other languages, other languages are high level type of languages. Whereas VHDL is a hardware oriented language means here we are actually writing the program in terms of the hardware whichever port we require whichever uh, 
elements we require from the hardware that hardware specific code we are actually writing okay so we just need to burn to that hardware okay but for the case of other uh, languages they are actually human more human understandable form okay and those languages has to be converted to machine understandable form and then only we can burn to the hardware okay so here also we are required to uh, compile and all but more it is concentrating on the hardware there is whichever hardware you are requiring this much of ports you require this much of pins from the hardware you, you require that type of coding is called hdl type of coding that is hardware description language type of coding okay so out of the given options c c++ java are more higher end languages whereas vhdl is a hardware description language correct answer is option d okay next question that is a eighth question which of the following allows the reuse of software and hardware components okay a platform based design b memory design c peripheral design d input design okay so when we are going for a platform based design the platform based design allow the reuse of hardware and software components so in order to comp up, comp up with the increase in the complexity of the embedded system so when we are adding some of the uh, new elements or when we are uh, going to increase the complexity of a embedded system if you are going for a platform based approach means we can have that complexities or we can have that additions okay so the uh, uh, hardware that is the platform based design will help in the reuse of the hardware and the software components the correct answer is option a okay next question which design activity is in charge of mapping operations to the hardware okay a scheduling b high level transformation c hardware software partitioning d compilation so when designing an embedded system there is designing of hardware and designing of software okay so actually sometimes we also go for a uh, like mixed kind of a thing hardware software co design it it is also possible so whenever we are designing this uh, embedded system in the hardware software partitioning we decide that which all things need to be mapped to the hardware and which all things will be kept in the software okay so that partitioning will decide the mapping of operations to hardware so there will be some hardware elements there will be uh, some software routines so when we are doing the hardware software partitioning we decide that these all routines are more concentrating on the hardware okay so the hardware software partitioning is activity which is in charge of mapping the operations to the hardware and also to software we decide that in that partitioning we decide that this will be going to hardware and this will be kept in the software module okay so correct answer is c then 10th question so very basic question so also you should be knowing the answer of this question okay so the question is embedded systems are dash a general purpose b special purpose c both a and b so which of this option is correct embedded systems if you don't know about uh, the definition of embedded system i would suggest you to watch two videos uh, in the interview preparation playlist of ec electronics you can find two videos on embedded system interview questions in the part 1 video uh, we i have actually explained regarding the basics of embedded system what is embedded system what all elements are present in an embedded system everything okay so it is when you talk about an embedded system it is a, a system which is uh, designed for a specific purpose and it is only intended to do that purpose it is not general purpose uh, like computer so if you talk about a computer it is a general purpose system we can make use of a computer to perform a lot of operations but if you take a uh, take the case of a printer or a washing machine uh, or uh, some other modules uh, for example an ac or uh, a printer okay if you take uh, a digital camera all these things are meant for performing specific operations for example if you take a printer it can only take a take print outs like right? so uh, it has a specific function right 
but uh, gen general purpose system means like computers they can be uh, uh, make use to do a lot of applications and everything but an embedded system like printer or a washing machine can be only uh, make use to do only a specific thing okay so that is the main difference between embedded system and a general purpose system the examples of embedded systems are uh, you can say it is printer washing machine then atm then video camera these are actually very uh, basic embedded systems which we daily see so that's why i've told there's a lot of embedded systems if you search for around us okay so anyway it is a what type of a system it is a specific or a special purpose system correct answer is option b is the correct answer okay so these are the 10 questions which i have included in this video but anyway i would suggest you to watch the video on the interview questions from embedded systems also there are two videos which have been kept in electronic uh, core company interview preparation playlist i would uh, list out that playlist in the description also so you can find that video uh, that is there are two videos just uh, uh, just listen to those videos okay you will get a very good idea regarding embedded systems and that will be useful for your examination also okay so we have seen 10 questions in this video i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please do give it a thumbs up also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching